Okay. Um, so, so Hinda, um, this meeting is all about BRICS. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think we must start by you sharing your knowledge about BRICS, and then I will also fill in. Yeah, what Mariana and I spoke about, um, she asked me to join. Uh, we have a, a fertilizer company, um, just to give you a short, um, you know, just to that you guys know where we, we why we are here. Um, but we do specialize in more organic fertilizers. So we all always, and, and our focus mainly is on soil health. Um, we have to start um, looking after our soil before we can even start looking at, um, at the health of our plants. So we specialize in, in organic fertilizers that um, would help the soil. We put in microbes uh, and so forth, um, depending on, on the farmer's choice or the, the grower's choice. We do uh, do chemical uh, fertilizers as well, because um, in some places the farmers need to, or the growers still need um, to use their chemical fertilizers to build up their soil. Uh, we do soil sampling, um, etc. So that's just in short, just to let you guys know why I'm here. Um, what Mariana also said, um, yeah, regarding bricks. I don't know if uh, everybody understands the concept of bricks. Um, can no. you can you can you tell us what bricks stand for? Yeah. Um, I didn't. I didn't get the meaning of it. The, the, but just in short, it's the sugar or the sucrose reading that's in your plant. So it's okay. all just sugars. <clears throat> okay. Um. Joshua, I'll ask you, do you know anything about BRICS? Yeah, I, 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 read, I, I, read, it, I read it online when Marena gave me the link, and it's about sugar level in the plants. So I said, well, I'll hear more from you today. Okay, yeah. I'm going to give you guys a view of, of, my, of my knowledge with BRICS. Okay, um, what happened is that we've got contracts with um, foreign companies, okay? Um, and remember... In most African countries, moringa is produced on a on a on a large scale, <clears throat> and what happens is that almost every person has got a moringa tree in the backyard. So the problem is is that there's not real good pricing in Africa for moringa because everybody's got it. Um, I can if if I buy, buy local moringa, I can get it for as little as fifty rand a kilogram, um, delivered to my doorstep. And in dollars, that gives you about three dollars um, a kilogram for moringa. So we have to produce moringa that is of international standards if we want to make a living as a moringa farmer. Okay. So the the challenges that we had was that as soon as the rain comes, the moringa started growing and everybody's happy. But when the when when the rain comes, also all the pests and all the locusts and all these things are also coming, lots of worms, moths, and everything, and then they start attacking your plant. Um, it was so much so that I could I could not even produce. I've got I've got export <laughs> contracts, um, and I could not um, I could not um, deliver any product because I had two problems. The first problem was they would eat eat our stock, okay? And the second problem was when you when you deliver or when you produce a product, you've got these stuff like little worms or something or eggs. When you deliver it to the customer, these things will hatch and your customer would say, listen, yeah, we, you, your product is full of worms or whatever. So that's when I started finding out what ways would, would help best. Um, to protect our crops in future. And it, it was so interesting. Uh, Mariana, can I continue or do you want to take over? It seems like Mariana has got a story from. So, so we, somebody told me about this, this uh, brick story. So we started investigating. And so what, what, what um, uh, Hinda said was, was correct. Bricks is basically an identification method to determine the sugar value in your, your product, all right, in, in your plant. So a BRICS value will also give you an indication 
of how good your plant is. So a plant with too less, too little um, um, water will have a very, very, very low brick reading. A plant with too little nutrients will have a very low brick reading. So any plant under the stress will have a very low brick, brick um, reading. And it, to some people will say, oh, that's beyond us. A BRICS reader will cost you in terms of 300 Rand, which is about $20 US dollars. Um, and then with that, you can actually go through your field and determine um, each and every plot. You can actually determine the BRICS reading to see what it is. So what we did in our fields was, I've got about close to a million Moringa trees. And in, in, in one side of the field, everything was eaten up by, this, by these locusts. And some parts of the field, there was no locust at all. And that's when we started measuring this. And we found that in Moringa, if your bricks reading <clears throat> is any, anything from 13% and higher, that there's no infestation of anything. Um, then it means your plant has got very high immunity. When your plants have got very high immunity, it means the nutritionist value of your plant is perfect. It means you're giving the best product doesn't matter what, what the test say in, in terms of I want to give ethically, I want to give the best product to my customer because I want my customer to heal from the Moringa. So that's why I strive to have the best plant. And the bricks reading will determine whether you've got good Moringa or not. And that's what I wanted to say. In any case, now anybody else can take over. Um, yes, okay. I just need Sorry, that um, AJ. what you guys should also um, remember is that your it depends on, also on where you take your bricks because your bricks reading in your leaves might be different from your bricks reading in your um, any stump. Sorry, my English just went. Uh, <laughs> the stem, yeah, stem. Yes. So and and um, I have I don't know if you guys would be able to see this. I have here, uh, I can send it to you guys on email. It's just a chart that shows you the, the what levels of bricks you need um, for, for different um, pests. Like your locusts is uh, one of your insects that can um, absorb the highest bricks. Um, anything from 10 to about 12 bricks, they will still eat your crop. But if you go lower, your chewing insects um, will still chew your crop from a nine to 11 bricks. And you go down like your aphids is the, is the worst. They, from a three to an eight, they will, they will, they can damage your bricks. And um, I think just to explain why bricks is so important, um, insects doesn't have a pancreas. So they cannot absorb this sugars that your plant, they, what bricks is, the sugars, they cannot, um, their body cannot, um, they cannot use those sugars. So those sugars is the reason why they then die. So they will take a bite maybe out of your leaf or um, of your product. And if they taste that there is too much bricks, they will then go onto um, and rather another plant. But like the gra grasshoppers you mentioned, I mean, they, that's why um, I understand why your bricks is 13 and higher because they, they love, more sugars so they um they love the biggest problem when it comes to um high bricks um but uh, a lot of um, plants i do also have a diagram with all the different uh, product plants and grains and what etc that can tell you exactly what is a good bricks what is a normal bricks and what is an excellent bricks um, that can go up to 20 and higher and then um not like you said, AJ, it's not, it's a good crop thing. Your crop is then healthy. Your crop has got all the necessary nutrients and everything that needs to be in that crop. It makes it a better product. And uh, it also expands the shelf life. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I also, yeah, that, that's a very important thing. Um, so so the, the shelf life will be also extended, like she said. Um, but what we also have to discuss is, is that um, how do we increase the brick level of a plant and what factors decreases the, 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 the brick value of the plant? Um, just one thing that I want to tell you is that 
every year when these moths come, they come by the billions. They don't just eat moringa. They eat everything on the farm that they can get hold of. Okay. So in other, uh, in other farms, what they do is they use pesticides to control these, these moths. So what will happen is today, um, they will spray the pesticides and whatever um, moths or worms are in your field will die that day. But remember, tomorrow, the, 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 the moths from, from the field next door will just come back into that crop. So that is not a solution. The only solution for worms, uh, pests, uh, locusts, everything, is to be able to control your bricks. Um, another thing that, that uh, another advantage of bricks is that lots of us, especially the guys on top, is, is a bit better. But we have a problem of frost in the winter, and and what happens is the, the high sugar level of the bricks in the plant is basically its energy, so it can handle a much severe temperature. If your bricks is high, then plant with the low bricks. Is that correct? Yes. No, that definitely is correct. We also saw it on our trials, our maize trials that we did this year. Um, and with with your plants being much more healthier, uh, we have um, we had a six week uh, very hot weather um, where it was quite severe. And what we found is that um, our trials. The, the maize usually they, they crumple up their leaves when it's too hot. And what we find is that they can um, handle much colder, like you said, colder temperatures, but also hot temperatures. And not one of them turned in their leaves to to um, uh, to protect protect themselves. Yeah. They, yeah. they they had no need for that um, because the plant was so much healthier. So it could could withstand so much higher temperatures than the guy next door that did not, um, um, you know, did not have a look at that. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So it's important for, for us now. Okay, so guys, everybody should go and read about this bricks. It's so important. We are doing on a, on a, on a neighboring uh, field, we're doing um, um, vegetables and what we did is since we've come to learn about the bricks we use it in the vegetables as well and I'm telling you we we are about 90% better than last year in, in terms of fending off all type of uh, you know insects and bugs and whatever so it's a very important thing and the other problem is when you use chemical pesticides you are basically buggering up the, 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 the your soil, you know. So that's it. that's why it's so important to fight these things naturally. Okay? Can you, Hendo, tell us now what things lower your bricks and what things will pick up your bricks? Yeah, like you said, if there's no, um, if there's not enough nutrients, if your soil is is, is not, you know, there's no. There's nothing in your soils. That's why it's very important to, to measure your soils. Unfortunately, there is no um, laboratory in South Africa that can uh, measure your soil health. So we use a, an American um, laboratory. Um, so we send it, it's not, it takes two weeks, so it's not a lot of time. Um, we fly it out there and uh, we use that laboratory. So the first thing you have to do is see what is in your soil. That that's the, yeah, that's your basic or your your starting point to see what what exactly is in your soil. Um, and if you have used uh, chemical fertilizers etc. before, it doesn't say it's, it can be it can show in your soil, but it's not necessary um, necessarily there for your plants to absorb. That's why we uh, use microbes. You have to, we use soil microbes, um, different, different soil microbes. We don't have only one that can break down those, um, those nutrients, macro, micronutrients that can break it down so your, so your plant can use it. So any fertilizer, um, organic fertilizer, or just the elements itself, it, we usually, um, we take each farmer on its own. If it's maize, if it's moringa, if it's soya, anything, um, and we work from whether um, 
You know, we, we take the soil sample and then we work from there. What is, what is in your soil? That will depend on what you need to put in your soil, which will then um, bring up your bricks. Um, we use humic acid, we use fluvic acid, all those um, that is in a, in a product that we use that can all um, raise your bricks. So the only thing really that, that breaks down your bricks, like you said, if it's, there's too much water, because everything washes away. Um, if there's too much, if you spray on top of the soil or you spread stuff on top of the soil and you don't work it in, um, those luchen, I don't, can't really think of the, the English word. It wash, it, it, either the sun burns it uh, and it, you can't use it or it washes away or it's just not um, be able to absorb by the plant. Um, so anything that cannot be absorbed by the plant, so the plant cannot keep itself healthy because the, what it needs, there isn't. So, um, okay. yeah. And like you said, with the insects, I mean, the bricks is high. We've seen it on all our trials that we do. If it's uh, soybeans or if it's Thank vegetables, you. we don't need, um, we don't use pesticides because we don't have insects. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I that is wonderful, Linda and AJ. That's really been a big, uh, you know, relief to all of us to listen and hear all of this. What do you want to say? Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, this is the stuff that we use to pick up bricks, okay? Um, so first of all, um, that's what I read, okay? As we, we, we have to put a lot of nitrogen into the, into the soil, okay? And then we spray stuff on the leaves. Mm -hmm. I can I can get the breakdown of the stuff that we spray on the leaves, but it looks like it's like a, a liquid molasses based stuff. You know, it's like so it's high in sugars. Um, if you use this stuff on a regular basis, and like I said, you have to have a bricks meter so that you can actually um, go to the. If you see a plant not performing well or an area in your field not performing well. For anybody to be able to determine what is the BRICS reading of that area to see what to be done on that. That's all that I want to say. Oh, it looks, Maria, looks like Mariana is still struggling. Yes, and what? Sorry, Mariana. Okay, but uh, you just uh, regarding your brick, bricks meters, you can get um, nice bricks meters as well. Yes, that... uh, what we need to do is we need to ask a little. Okay, no, um, sorry. Um, the bricks meters you get also that can it's more expensive. Um, that doesn't just give you the reading, it also tells you which micro element or macro element it needs. So if you are in different, not just the moringa, in different, if you have different crops as well, it can tell you in your in your in your sampling which um, specific micro, if it needs potassium or it needs um, some um, iron or whatever, it can tell you what what exactly it needs, and that also makes it a lot easier. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't even know that, but I know know that potassium is a very, I think potassium, cal calcium, and um, uh, nitrogen was a very important thing for um, picking up the bricks. But what we should do is, after this meeting, we should leave our contact details, even use yours, Enda. I mean, there's lots of questions that I want to ask you as well. Yes, but sure. we should leave our, our contact details on the Shine Africa group so that anybody that because I mean, Mariana, we can't get really hold of her. Um, so the people will be able to ask us, you know, what is the process? What do I do first? Um, the, the, the reason why I, I'm trying to, um, to, to, it will be so nice if every Moringa farmer um, can go this way, because then all of us, if you can see that your bricks is high enough, we know that we are, are putting the best product on the market that is the, the deal because if you put a product of not good um, uh, quality on the market you, you you're basically 
um, you know, you're doing damage to the name of Moringa because people will not get healed or will, won't get better or anything like that. If you if you take, for example, some of our products are, are products which people spray on plants. If I've got a product with a good with a good um, um, brick score, it means when this is being used as a as a as a fertilizer um, on crops on on on, on um, leaves, it will also you know, it, you, you'll see that the, the bricks on that plant should also be higher because my my product is of high quality. You know, that's so important for me. Mm. Yes, no, that's true. Um, just getting back to um, also your, like you said, with the nitrogen, do you have a specific, um, do you specifically, what, what is the ratio to NPK that you normally um, give your, your Moringas? Or do you I not use that at all? I can put that on the group. I do not know exactly. I do not know that. But I'm sure you know the product. Um, the product. The product's name is called Nitro Boost. Don't you know the product? <laughs> I think your your company is also doing that. I'm just buying yeah. from the agent close yes, to me. Yes, no, that's Maybe wonderful. Yes. So please tell, tell us the MPK of that product. You know. Okay, yes. No, I know Nitro Boost. It's one of my products as well. I just used AgriBoost with it as well because NitroBoost is just nitrogen. Your um, AgriBoost has got more in than it's got your all your your acids and your micro elements and your kelp, and it's just got more in than just nitrogen because your plant needs um, not only needs the nitrogen um, like um, when it goes into seed, you will need more K, uh, K kaolium. Potassium. Sorry, I, I'm in Afrikaans. You will need more of that to have a very good um, fill to have the best seeds that you can produce. But yes, yeah. no, um, it's my product as well, so it's good. Okay, um, <laughs> another thing that I just want to tell you when I read about this um, was if you've got a high brick score on your plant, when, you, when your plant goes to flowering, okay, <laughs> you'll find a much bigger yield in flowers. Yes. Therefore, you'll find a much bigger yield in seeds. And also, remember, flowers has to be pollinated to make the seeds. That whole process will almost be double as effective when you've got a high brick score. So like I said, I can't see that any person can think of going forward without checking the bricks. Yeah, and not only is that, um, it's also important because it makes, it is effort and you have to take your bricks reading every day at the same time, preferably in the morning to see if yeah. it's every day, if it's the same. Uh, but um, I mean, it also helps everybody in that way. You, you give the plant what they need. If you don't need to give it anything, it in, you save money, but you still have a good plant. But you don't over fertilize it which can also be a bad thing in the long run, depending on what fertilizers you need, you use. So if you, so either way you go, you, you're winning. Yes, I, I agree with you. Mariana, are you back with us? I'm back here, yes, AJ, I had to swap phones. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, thank you everyone, I'm back here. Um, Enda, thank you as well for great input, AJ, great input. Now let's ask some questions. Charles, what questions do you want to ask about it? Because you've you also used Enda's one project uh, here on the farm. Are you here, Charles? Oh, yes, Mariana, I'm here. <laughs> okay, thank you, Charles. <laughs> Yeah, but Mariana, I just want to first to speak about the the bricks and then I can contribute something and then I can also talk about and uh, I about and the uh, agri boost fertilizer which we are using. Thank yeah, you. So, yeah, so the importance of having I bricks uh, having I bricks in, in the plants, it can help us to fight in the stress conditions such as the cold and the drought. Mm -hmm. And the same eye bricks, it can also help to for pest and the disease resistance. Also, eye bricks is the one which determines the flavor and the sweetness of the 
plant, even the quality of the plant. Mm -hmm. So how we can maintain the, the eye bricks in the plants, we need to prune the dead branches and the leaves. Also, we need to watering according to the specific plant needs. Also, we need to make sure that we are removing the weeds which can compete with the, which, which can compete with our nutrients with the plants. But the major one which determine the, the, the high bricks level in the plant is soil health. Soil health is having the, soil health is having the abundant life in the, in the soil, which can help us. Or oh, soil health is the having of abundant life in the soil, such as WMZ, Temansi, and microscopic organism, which helps to build the, the soil. Once you have, uh, once you build the soil, you can have uh, high bricks in the, in your plants. And the only thing which can help us to build the soil healthy, we need to go to organic farming, such as uh, intercropping and crop rotation. Crop rotation, you need to make sure that you do crop rotation with uh, Mm, moringa and pigeon peas, which are beneficial for plants and which can even help us to, to build the microorganism in the soil. Mm. And also, we are using Ender product, which is AgriBoost fertilizer. You can see this mm. AgriBoost fertilizer we are using for moringa and for Irish potatoes, which we are doing. At the farm, we are using, we are growing Irish potato using the, the bugs, even moringa. And I'm not just saying, the, I'm not just saying without uh, testify how this agri boost helps us to, in terms of pesty and disease. You can even see, maybe Mariana is going to send you some, some photos so that you see how the Irish potatoes, even moringa, the way it's growing. And we never even experience any pest and disease. So make sure that when we have uh, high bricks in the plant, it can help us to, for sweetness, even the growth and the, the, the microorganism in the, in the soil. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Well done. Uh, can you introduce your friend from Zambia as well, please? Oh, I, I don't see him. I hope maybe he's not oh, online. Oh, he's not online. Okay, yeah, all because, right. Because he told me that he has network problem. So I don't think so. He, he managed to... We, to, to we will in. get him afterwards. We will speak to him afterwards. And now I'm going to introduce yeah, Anna. She's been, worked on uh, many uh, Moringa farms before. And she's here with us on the farm as well. And uh, I want to ask her, her input, and she also knows AJ. She's worked with AJ so, before as well. Yeah, Anna. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all good. Okay, I'm going to emphasize. Hello, AJ. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to emphasize on what AJ was saying about um, using bricks to produce uh, like okay. tasty end products. Just a moment. Uh, Sir, so I'll give you a chance to speak oh, after okay. Anna. Okay, I'll give you a chance. Anna, you to the floor. Okay, okay. I wanted to... Um, Okay, I wanted to, to, to emphasize on the point that uh, AJ brought up about the uh, end product of um, uh, using bricks on plants being like, if you use bricks on fruits, uh, fruit trees and uh, vegetables, the end result is tastier and sweeter. Uh, on the farms that I've worked before, when we're making food uh, using Moringa products like um, Moringa juice and um, also Moringa, just spraying Moringa on our food, there is a significant difference in the way the food tastes before using bricks 
And <coughs> now when you're using bricks at Mariana uh, Price Farm, the, 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 um, the leaves of Mariana Price um, Moringa plants definitely taste different. They've got this, Moringa definitely, I mean, generally it's a, not a very good tasting plant. So I was quite surprised when I got here and I saw the huge difference uh, when it came to how Mariamara's plants, um, I mean, taste. Then I got to uh, communicate with her and then she told me that they were using this um, agri-boost. Then I, I'm actually vouching for the product. That's what I'm trying to say. Because even the, the, the fruit that she has here taste different. The oranges, the grapes that she has here, they taste so sweet. So generally, it's not all about the taste as well. It's all about the, the, the health of the plant itself because healthier plants means healthier consumers. So mm -hmm. if you have uh, consumers like animals and people that are feeding on plants that are healthy because they have got high bricks, then it means we also become generally healthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Okay, so you wanted to ask a question. Uh, you may go ahead. Your hand is up. Hello, sir. I don't know your name because you put your hand up. So he did ask, is bricks affected with the type of the soil? So the person with the hand raised. Okay. Um, Enda and yeah. uh, AJ. First Enda and then AJ can answer. <laughs> Would you just say that again, Marianne? Sorry, the, it's, it was not clear. Is uh, it affected with the type of soil? soil affected? By the bricks. Is the soil affected? When is you bricks, use bricks? Yes. Is bricks affected with the type of soil? Yes. What what um, the plant yeah. does it, during the day, it uses all its sugars. Um, everything that it needs, it uses during the day. And then at night, all the excess sugars that it has, it goes down through the roots and it goes into the soil. And that sugar is used again as food for the microbes in the soil. Enda, can I ask another question here? We have learned that uh, when we harvest our moringa, we should do it very early in the morning before the sun is strong and all that. Um, this still applies for that, am I right? Uh, because you just said it goes down in a box, but when does it come back up into the plant? No, as soon as as soon as your plant, as the soon sugars. as uh, the plant wakes, um, it starts again um, mm -hmm. taking. I mean, the plant never sleeps actually, um, so it, it just it's keeps on, on producing. Yeah, so, so, so it's but a continuous yeah. process. Yes, but I mean, as soon okay. as the sun can, I can say the sun comes up. Use that as a as a, a reference. So the plant starts again. Um, why I said early in the morning is just, you can do it at night as well, but um, I mean, you have to do it. The, the, the important thing is you have to do it the same time every day because it doesn't help. Um, if it's a cold morning, your bricks might not be the same if it's a hot, if it's a hot morning, but um, depending on what, what the plant does with its sugars and how many sugars um, they was um, to able to absorb. So it depends on that. So, but it, it with vegetables, with everything that you have, it's always better to harvest as early in the morning as possible. Yeah. Um, AJ, give me your taking on it, please. Okay. First of all, yeah, the soil will uh, will, will, will be at the, the determination point of how, what the bricks is in the plant, definitely. But I just want to, I don't know if, if I can use the word correct, Enda, because he knows much more than me, but your bricks reading in the morning is much higher than a bricks reading in the afternoon or at night. So you would want to harvest in the morning. It doesn't have to be like from four to seven or whatever. Yeah. Anytime morning time, what we do is we harvest from early morning six until 12. 
That's okay. the time that we so that our, we know that our best product is that time. From there on, like like Enda says, you know, you're getting to the afternoon, and then the plant pushes the, the excess bricks into the soil. So so we we harvest early morning. That's the that's the best way, and and this is just a harvesting perspective that most people must realize that. When in the morning or daytime, you're, you're, if you harvest early in the morning, you've got the whole day, the sun and all the stuff to, to dry the product. If you harvest late in the evening, then you've got nighttime. Um, if the product is not dry fast enough, you'll find something called a mold on the leaves and then your product is not good. Okay, that's very interesting. So we have to make sure that we don't have that you know, on the leaves when we harvest. Yeah, if we if we okay. harvest any any time later than twelve o'clock in daytime, then we've got a problem. Our product is not of best quality. If if we harvest later than twelve o'clock, one o'clock in daytime. Okay, and uh, if a rain and all that, does that affect very big or not so much, or is it slight? Uh, if, if for me, we don't even harvest at all, really. The thing is, we don't have to No, I mean the, the quality. I mean the quality of when you apply the bricks, uh, you know, the, 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 the booster to your plants. Um, okay, I think Aina must answer this, but I know that too much water and too little water is not good for bricks. But Aina can answer that. Um, um, Aina, does too much rain affect your bricks? Yes. Yeah, of course it does. Anything, anything that is, um, in Afrikaans we say tap. If there's too much of this or too less of this, it also, it also definitely affects, yes. Um, like I said, the rain, if it's too much rain, it can wash away some of your nutrients or, um, and in, I mean, in a can, a Moringa doesn't like a lot of water in, in, in any way. So it doesn't have, want its roots okay. standing in too much water for too long. So yes, no, too much and too little will definitely um, affect it. Okay. Oh, I see uh, our friend is back online here. Rokatuo, you are here, welcome. Rokiato, can you hear me? Rokiato, can you hear me? She's just come online, AJ. Hello. I just want to... No, I Hello. was online How so far, you? but I had an issue with my internet now. <laughs> so I no problem. I also had a yes. problem. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I sent you some information on the bricks. Now, everyone, this lady is a very big um, Moringa farmer, Moringa promoter up in uh, Mali. And uh, maybe you can just introduce yourself, tell us your Moringa story or what you're busy with, and then you can give us at the same time your taking on Moringa as well. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. So hello everyone. My name is Rokia Tutrauri. I'm from Mali and I'm a green entrepreneur involved in developing the value chain around Moringa. So I've discovered Moringa in Turkey, uh, the Moringa tea. And with my husband, we've decided to, to come back to our country with uh, a, an idea, a, a project that can actually create impact while generating profits. So that's the reason why we've decided to choose Moringa. So the idea is to basically to go to rural areas to train women and um, empower them to plant Moringa. And then after three miles, we come back, we pay the leaves, the seeds, the flowers, the roots from them, and we process them into tea, powder, soap, oil, and other edible products. So that was the idea. We started, the company was established in 2019, but we started in 2021. So we started with uh, 50 women, 54 women actually, in one village and they managed to plant like uh, 800 trees due to some issues. And uh, in 2022, we have trained 1,060 farmers and they've been able to plant over 17,000 Moringa trees. Wow. So our ambition this year in 2023 
is to empower 5,000 farmers to plant uh, 150,000 trees by by June by by June actually. And uh, the whole vision is to plant 10 million moringa trees, empower 15,000 farmers, and integrate this superfood in the daily diet of uh, uh, every Malian in every African. Uh, we, we are really engaged in to planting moringa because our country is facing desertification in Mali. Every year, over 6 million trees are destroyed without compensation. So that's also, um, we, we have seen in Moringa as um, a way to, uh, to empower farmers to plant trees, to plant more trees and to be interested in planting trees. So once they start with Moringa and they get interest, they can also start with uh, other spicy, species of uh, trees and also effectively fight desertification. So with this um, green uh, innovation, uh, we've, um, we've participated in many international programs, such as the Mandela Washington Fellowship, which gave us the, the chance to go to the US and learn business in, at Rutgers University. And after that, we had the chance to go to South Carolina to learn about um, uh, regenerative agriculture. And we've also been recognized by the World Economic Forum as a top uplink um, innovator to, to address desertification. And we've also um, been recognized by the World, uh, Resource, World uh, Resource Institute as a land accelerator champion. Um, so that's in a nutshell what we do and what we envision. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much and good luck with everything and all the trees and all the people, the women that you're empowering. And tell me, when you started reading up about uh, the bricks that I sent you, what was your taking on that? That's really the innovation we have been looking for because last year we had lots of issues with worm and also termites. So we, we lost a lot of... Uh, plants of moringa plants do, due to worms worms coming every every year during raining season and also termites has destroyed lots of trees of our farmers so i think that's a, that's an innovation we can use in our moringa value chain to to increase our productivity and also the taste while um, addressing all the, uh, the 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 worm the termites in, in, in a biological uh, ways without using pesticides or other chemical products. Because last year, we, when we had this issue, we didn't have any, any uh, other solution but to kill them with pesticides. We've tried with neem, with neem tree. Yes. So we've tried to spray neem on them. It's just, they, they, they went and the next day they, come, they came back again and they were really destroying our trees. So we were left with no choice but to use pesti uh, pesticides. So yes, I think that's this a- is the answer. This is at Sorry? least the answer. This is an answer for us, uh, for uh, health plants, you know, medicinal uh, plants that we are planting our herbs and everything. And uh, I will definitely put you in contact with Henda so that she can speak to you and see how she can help you uh, with all the women up there and with all the plantings that's coming along. And uh, I'm very grateful because it was AJ that introduced me to this and very, I think it was the very next day I went to visit Henda. She used to be my neighbor here on the farm. And uh, because I use, you know, testing her uh, products, I actually started mentioning to her about the bricks and we just got talking and, and then I said, well, I can't help but not bringing it to the platform, you know, because the platform needs it, our people needs it out there and we need to bring the change. And if this is in a natural way, I think it's fantastic. Joshua, you are here online as well. 
Is yes, Joshua I am following. Here? Yeah, yes, I'm following Hi, very well. Give us your take because this is so wonderful and man, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, this is a new this is a new technology. This is we something new to me. This. So I'm just we I'm pray just for answers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm just listening. Yeah, yeah. You just proceed. I'm following brilliantly. Uh yes, but and your taking, what do you think? You know, it's gonna yeah, this definitely is, bring yeah. some changes. Yes, this is new to us. It is actually yeah. new. And I had a lot of people yeah. asking me more, more questions about it. So all I told them was that uh, I'm coming to listen from the experts like uh, Marina Price, AJ, and all those that are involved. And then I will let yeah. them know. But actually, when I read the website, I studied it a bit. But it was brilliantly very new to me. And I was so surprised that we haven't met this knowledge anywhere before. Every day we it are learning. It was hidden. <laughs> It's hidden, hidden. Knowledge. It's, it is knowledge, yes, hidden it's knowledge. knowledge that are yes. out there, but it was uh, yes. covered by a lot of fertilizing uh, companies. A lot of, um, you know, um, okay. fertilized companies knew about it, but they covered it because they wanted to use their fertilizers. And now it's companies like Hender's, okay. uh, you know, company um, that are actually speaking open about it and uh, helping us you know, to bring the changes. And this is what we have been looking for. And our people need it. I mean, the big farmers might be knowing about it, but the small farmers don't know. It is, it was just so hidden, man. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like thrilled that uh, Africa Moringa Hub can actually bring it, you know, to the people and that we can assist them and uh, find, you know, people to help us right across Africa and the globe to actually bring um, the, the proper clean product in the end. Now we know there's no excuse not to have um, a pesticides, a bad pesticides in your product. Now it can be clean product. And this is yeah. what we need. We need clean product for the consumers and there will be no hiding or anything, anything away. It is, uh, the truth is now out and <laughs> we can go forward. Yeah. Yes, Bariana, um, to intensify this knowledge, why don't we have a plan, a two weeks plan from now to the close of the month? And then we can intensify yes. the promotion and the education because a lot of people don't know about this. Actually, exactly. we didn't have more of them joining because they have no idea what it is. So let yes. us have another discussion outside this. And then we have yes. full education that we will, be uh, we will be blogging or we're posting from now to the close of the month. Then as the knowledge is going out, more people will ask questions. Then when they ask the questions, exactly. we direct it to uh, AJ and the team over there and they can explain. Yes. Because you know that we have a very exactly. wide platform. But let us make it maybe yes. from tomorrow, uh, we can have an educational material going out every day, every day, something brief. Yes. Then as the questions are coming, yes. we will direct the questions to them and they can educate the yes. people. Two weeks from now to the close of the month is enough for people to know about it. Absolutely. Thank you, Joshua. I'm very glad that yeah. we could do it on this platform. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Now, now yeah. I'm asking anyone else with questions to AJ and Henda. Anyone else who want to ask something? Vessel or uh, Caroline? Jeanette, you want to ask something? Lungile, she's from uh, Swaziland. Maybe you want to ask something. You know a lot about agriculture as well. Anyone? They're all quiet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ma Is Mariana. It? Yes. Maybe I, yeah, I just want to contribute something. So yes. I think uh, maybe if one to have like uh, better bricks in the in the plants, we need it to to divest from synthetic life to go to organic life, because when we are using let's say synthetic synthetic fertilizer, we Synthetic fertilizer it depleted some nutrients which plants need. But if we are using organic farming, we can have all the bricks and all the macro and micro nutrients which the plants need. As a result, we can have better bricks in the in the plants. Because there are some people who can't manage to afford the reflector meter, which we can use to 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 test the eye bricks or to test the bricks level in the plants. So the best way, instead of uh, using synthetic, they can go to organic farming, which means they are going to be sure that they have better bricks level in the plants. Thank you. Yes. 
Yes, no, I agree, Charles. And you know, the refractometer is not expensive. I think I Googled and it was three or 400 Rand. I don't know if there's different types, Enda. Is there different types of refractometers out there? Are you selling them as well? Uh, not at this stage. We are looking at it. Um, like I said to Asia earlier, yes, you have different, um, you can get one for 300 Rand to get one for 5,000 Rand, just depending on what you want. And like I said to AJ as well, um, uh, you get uh, fractometers that can tell you exactly what, what micro element or, or micro, micro, micro element the plant actually needs. But um, just, to, just to also, um, what Charles has said about the bricks and, and uh, you know, and AJ, we know uh, lifting the bricks. Another thing that we should not forget as well is um, your, with the compost. I know you guys use a lot of compost. You use chicken manure. Um, that also um, puts a lot of fungi and uh, bacteria back in your soil, which also helps with the breakdown um, or, or, of, of what is in your soil, but that can also contribute to your, um, to your bricks readings. Okay, yes, your yeah, compost is very important. Yeah, AJ? Okay, I just want to tell you that um, when we have a meeting like this, I also want to introduce the company that help, is helping me, not to promote them, but these people have got so much knowledge. And together with Hinda, because what they do is, they come to your place, and I mean, you know, this guy can just explain to you. They, they come and they look at your soil. They come and look at your, your farming method. And then they, they, they give you a plan. And what's so nice is this guy can actually tell you how to make your own compost. Mm -hmm. not just a, it's not just a solid compost we, we can use in your soil, but they also show you how to make a liquid compost. We, we call this a compost tea, which you then put either through your dripper lines or people can spray them on the plants. And what they do is, for instance, um, Hendo has got, uh, her stuff is 100%, but what these people do is they concentrate to get your bricks up as soon as possible. Um, you can actually have your bricks up within 21 days, according to me. We've seen it on our vegetables. So that's a very important thing. I did not invite the guy today, but next time when you have a meeting, let's do that. Um, so the people can understand that when your bricks levels are high, first of all, you don't need any pesticides. You know that your plants are, 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 are functioning optimal. And the, the most important thing is we put out good product to our customers. Um, we, we just spoke about it that your, your, your plants are so much healthier in terms of fertility. Um, your plants are so much better in terms of shelf life. All these things are so much better. So we, we, we have to try and talk to these people. And, and you know, the problem is, you sitting in South Africa and, and, and another person is in Mali. Um, yeah. How are they going to get your product? What these people can do is they can tell the listeners of this uh, podium how to produce something that will pick up the bricks from whatever they have. You can make, you can, for instance, make something out of sugar cane that will yeah. pick up the bricks. You understand? Yes. Um, um, but the nicest thing is, um, and I'm sure that will be a discussion for another day, but they can they can tell the people how to make your own compost. And then that's so nice because what happens is your compost is supposed to be made from stuff on your own farm. Because remember, every plant that grows on your farm is suitable for your soil, soil your, your weather climate, all these things. So when you make a compost from your own farm, it's a hundred percent better than anything else, you know. So we must just do it. I, I'm just, I'm just thinking of the people who is sitting in Timbuktu and do not have access to Henda or to anybody else, you know. I, I really, uh, yeah, I agree with you. That's why I mentioned um, the, the the compost and the chicken manure because that, that, or not even just chicken manure. You can use cow dung. You can use um, horse. Uh, excrement. I mean, there's a there's a lot of things that you can use. Um, yeah, because not everybody has has um, can get the product. And another product that you also mentioned, which is also very good, is is even mulasa. 
because molasses you can put molasses in your soil and that will if i mean there is always uh, it doesn't depend doesn't matter what type of soil you have you do have life in your soil and even if you just put molasses in your soil as a as a sugar um, that is uh, food for your for your micro of your um, that, well, that's good for your organisms, the, you know, for yeah. the microorganisms. So there's a lot of a lot of potential potential stuff on your farm that you can use. Okay. Just to oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I was just want to say one thing. So, so if if you if we can tell the people if you don't have anything else, then you start using, for instance, sugar cane, either the crushed sugar cane or maybe the juice from the sugar cane. For a start to start picking up your bricks and, and order online a bricks meter so at least you're going into the right direction sorry that's my last input <laughs> yeah sorry i just wanted to say with the sugar cane another another um is your sugar beets sugar beets are very much the same as your sugar cane they also make sugar from it so if you don't have if you maybe planted a few sugar beets you can use that as well to enhance the sugars okay. thank you Linda. We, yeah, Charles, after you, and I also want to say something. Yes, Charles. Okay, let's say like, uh, also people, they need to know about uh, soil pH, because soil pH is the one which determine in fact, the, the level of bricks in the plants. So let's say like, if you have uh, 6.5 to 7.2, which means you can know that you are going to have all the nutrients which the plants needs as a result, you can ensure that you have better bricks in your in your plants. Also, we need to teach people like um, those people who can't manage to to afford to buy maybe let's say like instrument which they can use to measure the soil pH. We can teach them in a simple way where they can use to test the soil pH so that they can be sure that the level of bricks in the plants. Uh, I because let's say like if you have 6.5 to 7.5, I think the level of bricks is almost to from 14 to, to 30, which is okay to to the plants. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Okay, Anna. Okay, thank you, AJ, for that uh, uh, point there that you can use uh, compost from uh, stuff that you don't need on the farm that you want to throw away, you can use that stuff and you can create something that can make our crops benefit, like branches, old branches and uh, leaves and whatever. Then it's a very inexpensive alternative for people who are living in the rural areas who can't afford uh, the, the much more expensive stuff. So bricks, in a way, it's uh, helping people uh, cut down uh, on their cost from uh, buying uh, expensive pesticides, expensive fertilizers to low cost produ uh, produ production of, um, of crops and farming that is also helpful to everyone. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much, Anna. Yes, I agree. I agree fully. Um, so that is for when we are in rural, when we have um, individuals farming small and um, for people backyard gardening, little farmers. And when we go to our more commercial farmers, that is where they will use the offering and all that. But then Linda also busy working out for me uh, if it's a little bit more complicated. But Linda can just mention a little bit more on that, how you work a program out as well, Linda, for farmers. For uh, more commercial farmers. Yeah, um, yeah. What we do is we start with the soil sampling. We send it, like I said, to an, uh, uh, a laboratory in, in America, Brookside. Um, they sh they are the only at this stage the only lab laboratory that can test the soil health, not just your NPK or what is a two to one extraction that can tell you what is available for the plant, what is in your soil and what is available for your plant in the soil. Um, so we start with that and then um, we also have a look at uh, every every farmer's individual needs. We have a look at the um, the individual equipment because every farmer farms on a on a different scale, on a different uh, different way of farming. And then when that we ask them what their needs are, what is their aim, what do they want to achieve, 
Um, and then from there, we sit with them and we discuss with them and we uh, help them to, um, to build a plan that is suited just for their farm or and for a specific crop and for a specific field because not all the fields are the same because not all the soils are the same and also every crop needs um needs something different thank you very much enda thank you aj anything more from your side uh, no, i'm happy with it as long as the people know it but and and the thing is we have to have on uh, it, maybe it's on shine africa where lots of people can start uh, um um you know, asking questions. I've also got a person who is like a fundi in this area who can answer this. We can just like maybe add him to the group so he can answer these questions. And maybe also then, I don't know if you want to do a discussion or what you want to do in the group. He will give you the formula of how to make your own compost. You know, what's the percentage of dry material, wet material, what, you know, what to look out for, all these things. But thank you guys for this opportunity. It was wonderful. It's nice working with you. And once we get all this fixed, Mariana can actually, you know, invite us to international markets and we all can, you know, uh, contribute to that and also make a few bucks out of it. Thank you so much, guys. I've got to go. I've got to animals and things okay, to look after. Okay. So I'll we'll see you <laughs> next time. God bless everybody, eh? Blessings, Bye. AJ. Enjoy the farming and good luck and thanks for all your input. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, AJ. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else who wants to say something? I will definitely, you know, we will create, you know, more talk on this WhatsApp group and then also on Africa Moringa Hub. We will definitely start sharing a lot more. Yes, Lungile. Yes, I was saying, how do you tell the bits in two trees? Yes. Because like I would do it, it's more similar to Moringa when you, when you produce it as a fruit tree. Yes. Hmm. Actually, I'm very excited about this topic. I wasn't aware of bricks, but today I've learned a lot. Thank you so much, Mariana and the team. Uh, uh, Mariana, Mariana. Please, yeah. Uh, yeah, Joshua. One minute, please. Uh, uh, Longeli, please, I want to see your face. It's been many years, <laughs> it's been many years not seeing your face. And Mariana, when we started African Moringa Hub, she originated the eat and plant Moringa stuff. And that's oh. slogan originated for her. So tell her, I want to see her face. Lungile, can you show your face? <laughs> Joshua, I want to it's, see you. Yes, yeah, it's been more yeah, than six friend, years. Joshua. More than six years now. I've not seen her face. More than six years. Uh, now. I will send you a photo from her. From no, I want a live. I want a live. I want a live picture of her face. <laughs> Pressure. Lungile, yeah. put your video on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, not today. <laughs> Next time, Joshua. Yeah, Next that's fine, that's fine. We don't that's know where fine. he is, so don't put yeah. pressure. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I will take six... your photo of Longele. Yeah, she's it's so been sweet. six years now, we've not seen her. And she's yeah, been very supportive with us on African Moringa Hub. Yes. Absolutely, always. Uh, yeah. She supports us very well. Thank you, yes. Longele. You're yes, from Swaziland. Yes. And yeah. uh, I hope to see us soon in yeah. Cape Town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Anyone else who want to say something? Let me see who else is on Yahoo. Vessel Kutsia. Vessel? What is Yay? <laughs> Caroline, you are from uh, Kenya. Caroline, are you from Kenya? Caroline? Hi, Caroline. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, okay. You can uh, say goodbye. Okay, guys. It's been nice and wonderful seeing your faces and hearing your contributions. I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you, Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. She's Thank just attending to her baby. She's attending to her baby quickly. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a baby in the house. <laughs> All, all right. So, uh, Maria, yeah, yeah. So, Mariana, let's uh, have a plan for from Monday to the next of the the month, and let's get okay. some uh, some content right up, and then we will post it, and then share with our followers, so that Absolutely. all inquiries will be directed to you and the team over there, and they can assist them. 
Absolutely, we will do that, Joshua. And thank you for yeah. the time for everyone. We really appreciate yeah. it. And Africa mm. Marine Gap is always bringing good news and wonderful news to the people, not just of Africa, but uh, globally as well. But yeah. I think this is going to yeah. make a big change. And uh, yeah. let's pray that God, you know, takes us through this journey and give us yeah. um, a safe journey with all of this. Thank mm. you. So we can thank agree you. now to everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Danke, Enda. Thank you, Enda. And thank you, everyone else. Okay, Caroline, you want to say something? <laughs> yes, I'm just saying thank you all. Maybe all after right. two or more meetings, I'll be able to grasp and uh, understand where we are going with this. You are very, very well. Are you on Kevin's group? You're the lady from Kevin's group, am I right? Yes. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. She's from Kenya and she's oh. a permaculture person, Joshua. She's oh, in really? Kenya? Oh, yes, okay. Kenya. Oh, yes, I see. Has, yes. she, has she got knowledge about Moringa? Uh, a little. A little. Yes. Can we, can we uh, Joshua, I'm busy with them. I'm busy with them on a group to okay. teach. <laughs> can we, can yeah. we book her up for a presentation first week of March? Caroline, yeah, you're gonna come online and you're gonna come and tell them all about the moringa from Kenya. Okay, yes. I'll yes. assist you. I'll assist okay. you. All right, first week, first Sunday of March, please.